The Catcher in the Rye is about alienation. The main character, Holden Caulfield, wants to make a connection with other people, but almost every scene in the book shows him trying to do this and failing. The book is set in the 1940s. Holden is a 16-year-old boy from New York City, and he's recently flunked out of several prestigious boarding schools because he doesn't apply himself. Holden tells his story from a tuberculosis rest home. Readers today tend to assume he's in a psychiatric facility, but that's not actually true. He tells us at the end of the first chapter that he practically got TB and had to come out here for all these checkups. He does speak with a psychoanalyst at this facility who encourages him to write his story. He gets sick because he spends three days just before Christmas roaming around New York City, sleeping very little, smoking and drinking a lot, with no winter coat, and in a state of intense emotional distress. So it is true that his emotional problems lead to the breakdown in his health. At the start of the novel, he's just been expelled from a school called Pensy Prep. Everyone at the school is at a football game, and he's isolated from everyone, looking down on it. His first thought is to go say goodbye to a teacher he likes, Mr. Spencer. Mr. Spencer is in bed with the flu. He challenges Holden about the fact that he doesn't do any work and doesn't seem to care about his future. Even though Holden was the one who wanted to talk to Mr. Spencer, he gets out of the room as quickly as he can, because he doesn't want to talk about why he doesn't apply himself, and it's bothering him that Mr. Spencer is old, and his chest is sort of bumpy looking. Ackley, one of Holden's neighbors in the dorm, comes to visit Holden, but he irritates Holden because of his personal habits and his insecurity. Holden's roommate, Stradlater, comes in. Stradlater is getting ready for a date with a girl Holden knows, named Jane Gallagher. Holden spent a lot of time with Jane during a summer in Maine, and he likes her. He tries to tell Stradlater how special she is by describing one of her quirks, how she would play checkers and not use her kings, but keep them in the back row. Stradlater could care less. He asks Holden to write an English composition for him while he's out on his date. Holden writes the composition, describing his younger brother Allie's baseball mitt, which Allie had written poems on so he could read in the outfield. Holden tells us that Allie died three years before of leukemia, so at this moment we know that the root of Holden's problems is that he's mourning his brother. He gets in a fight with Stradlater when Stradlater comes back from the date. Stradlater doesn't like the composition much, but more importantly, he won't tell Holden about the date, and Holden's worried that Stradlater tried to have sex with Jane. So he tries to hit Stradlater, and Stradlater gives him a bloody nose. Holden decides to leave the school, even though he's not supposed to go home for several more days. On the train to New York, Holden meets the mother of another boy in the school, whom Holden thinks is a bastard. Holden lies about his own name, calling himself Rudolf Schmidt, and he makes up stories about the woman's son, Ernest, saying that Ernest is the nicest and most popular boy at Pensy. He also says he, Holden, has a brain tumor that he's about to have removed. He tries to flirt with the woman, suggesting that they get drinks in the club car. She's nice to him, but she points out that the club car is closed, and she gets off in Newark. Holden gets to New York, and thinks about the people he could call, because he wants to see someone. He thinks of his sister, Phoebe, and Jane Gallagher, another girl named Sally Hayes, and a friend named Carl Luce, but he changes his mind and doesn't call anyone. Holden tries to bond with a taxi driver, inviting him to have cocktails with him, and asking if he knows where the ducks in Central Park go for the winter. The driver isn't interested. Holden checks in at the Edmont Hotel, where he sees other guests that he says are perverts. One man is cross-dressing, and another couple is spitting at each other in their room. He sort of likes what he sees this couple doing, but it bothers him that he likes it, because he thinks if he were fooling around with a girl he likes, he should respect her more than this. It's very late at night by now, but Holden decides to call a woman named Faith Cavendish. He's never met her, but he got her number from a friend, and he heard she used to be a stripper. He tries to get her to meet him for a cocktail, or let him come to her apartment, but she won't. Holden goes downstairs to a lounge called the Lavender Room, where a band is playing. He sits with three women from out of town and dances with them. They let him buy all their drinks and cigarettes, but they laugh at him because he's so young, and they depress him because they're so ignorant. He thinks about Jane Gallagher, whom he actually likes, and still gets mad thinking about Stradlater hitting on her. He goes to a bar in Greenwich Village to see a jazz pianist named Ernie. Ernie plays well, but Holden thinks he plays too well, and he knows he's good, and he pretends to be humble, so he's phony. Holden sees a woman who used to date his brother, and she wants him to have drinks with her in her date, but he thinks they're phonies, so he leaves. The elevator operator at the hotel, named Maurice, 
offers to send a prostitute to Holden's room, and he agrees without having time to think about it. A prostitute named Sunny comes to his room. He's hoping to lose his virginity to her, but when she gets aggressive with him, he becomes uncomfortable and says he's recovering from an injury and can't have sex. She asks for $10, but Holden will only give her 5 the price Maurice quoted. She leaves, calling him a bum. Sonny and Maurice show up at his door to collect the other $5. Holden practically breaks down in tears rather than pay it, because Maurice lied about the cost. But Maurice punches him in the stomach, and Sonny takes the money, and they leave. Holden sleeps just a few hours, and the next morning he calls Sally Hayes to make a date. He's dated Sally before, and she likes him. He thinks she's attractive, but he doesn't like her as much as Jane. He has breakfast in a diner, where he talks to two nuns. He thinks they're interesting, but while they're talking, he worries they're going to ask if he's Catholic, which spoils the conversation for him. He decides to call Jane, but he hangs up when her mother answers. He goes to Central Park, hoping to see his younger sister, Phoebe, without having to go home. He asks a girl in her class where Phoebe might be, and the girl suggests the museum. Holden goes to the American Museum of Natural History. He loves the displays in glass cases, which have been exactly the same since he was a little kid. Holden meets Sally for his date and takes her to the matinee of a Broadway play. Sally annoys him by talking to a boy she knows from another school, whom Holden thinks is a phony. They go to Rockefeller Center to skate, and Holden tries to convince Sally to run away right then and live with him in a cabin in the woods, where he'll get a job pumping gas. She obviously likes him, but she wants him to be a normal boy and to go to college and get a real job. He calls her a pain in the ass, and she storms off in tears. Holden calls Jane Gallagher again, but there's no answer. Holden has drinks with a friend from school named Carl Luce, who's several years older than him and living in the city now. Holden remembers Carl Luce as being sophisticated and liking to talk to the other boys about sex, and Holden has a lot of questions on his mind about sex, because he's attracted to girls he doesn't really like, like Sally, but he really wants to be with someone he likes a lot, like Jane. But he's drunk and too pushy with his questions, and Carl Luce tells him he's immature and he should see a psychoanalyst. Holden calls Sally, drunk, and tells her he still wants to come over and help her trim her tree. She says yes, but tells him to go to bed and call her back later. Holden sneaks into his own family's apartment so he can see his sister, Phoebe, without having to see his parents. Phoebe's happy to see him, but upset that he flunked out of another school. She accuses him of not liking anything or having any ambition since Allie died and he says he does have a fantasy he likes, of himself rescuing young kids before they run off a cliff while they're playing. He's basing this image on a Robert Burns poem that he's misremembering. Holden doesn't want to stay home or go back to the Edmont, so he calls a former English teacher named Mr. Antolini. At one of Holden's schools, Holden remembers a boy being bullied until he jumped out of a window and killed himself. Mr. Antolini picked the boy up, so Holden respects Mr. Antolini. Mr. Antolini warns Holden that he's going to need to figure out what he wants to do with his life, and whatever that is will probably require applying himself in school, and that if he reads, he'll find that other people have been morally and spiritually troubled like him, and left valuable records of their thoughts. Holden's not really listening, because by now he's completely exhausted and starting to get sick. Holden sleeps on the couch, but he wakes up because Mr. Antolini has put his hand on Holden's forehead and was looking at him sleep. He freaks out, thinking Mr. Antolini's a pervert. He runs off and sleeps in Grand Central Station for a few hours. The next day, he goes to Phoebe's school to give her a message to meet him at lunch, because he's running away and going to hitchhike out west. In her school, he sees the words, fuck you, graffitied on the wall, and he rubs it off. Phoebe meets him at the American Museum of Natural History, where the glass cases were. But she wants to run away with him, and she gets furious when he won't let her. They walk off, and Holden eventually leads her toward the zoo, where she gradually stops being angry at him. Holden buys Phoebe a ticket to the carousel, and he watches her ride it a few times. It's raining, and he's starting to get sick, but he's finally happy. That's the end of Holden's story. He says he got sick after that and came out to the rest home, and that he's about to move back and start another school, and he'll probably apply himself, but you don't know you'll do something until you do it. He says he misses everyone he wrote about. For more information about The Catcher in the Rye, check out The Catcher in the Rye Sparknote on sparknotes.com.